Hello and welcome to the Lichen Sclerosis Podcast. This is Kathy and this is my journal of learning about and living with lichen sclerosis. Each week, I research an aspect of lichen sclerosis, bring you the information, and tell you how it's affected my life. I'm not a medical doctor. I only share the information that I found so you can start a conversation with your doctor. So this week, we're going to talk about lichen sclerosis and stress. Specifically, I want to talk about how stress can affect lichen sclerosis, and I want to share five daily things that we can do to minimize stress and five quick tips if you're feeling stressed and you need a quick relief. Right now is a very stressful time in the world. We're dealing with the coronavirus pandemic. It's affecting everyone differently from what we are told the elderly and those with already compromised immune systems and respiratory conditions are severely affected. And as we've learned before in previous episodes, lichen sclerosis tends to attack women who are postmenopausal, which elderly women are. So we can infer that there are a lot of elderly women with lichen sclerosis that are dealing with this stress. Not to mention those of us who are younger, have families. So like right now, they canceled schools for two weeks in my area. That's an added stressor. You know, what if you don't have childcare and you have to go to work? You have to deal with, how am I going to take care of these children during the day and still make money? What if your job won't allow you to take those two weeks off? What if they say, okay, you can take those two weeks, but you're not getting paid. Now you have to figure out how am I going to pay my bills if you don't have the money in the bank, if you don't have a savings account? What if you have to get quarantined? Right now, the supermarkets, oh my goodness. I went to the supermarket yesterday and the shelves were empty. I had to take some pictures. I had to get some medicine for my husband because he's having fevers. He's not feeling very well. We don't think it's Corona, but if he doesn't get better in a couple of days, we're going to get him tested. Uh, you might notice that I'm a bit nasal. I think I have allergies, but if you know if he gets tested, then I'll go and get tested as well. Thankfully, my children right now are okay. You know, we've got two little girls, eight and 10, and we're trying to just parent them, but still kind of keep our distance so that they don't get sick. So now that's an added stressor of having to parent at the same time we're trying to get better, which is never fun at the same time that we're trying to be cautious of this new disease. And to top it all off, he's a server. So there's no paid sick leave for him. He works on tips. His company is not going to pay him his tips when he normally makes. That's an added stressor, loss of income. What if I have to take off two weeks? What if I lose those that income for two weeks? That's an added stressor. Stress tends to make my lichen sclerosis flare up big time. I am having way more consistent itchiness. I'm having fissures. I can feel a little blister trying to come through. And I know it's all because this has just been a really stressful week. There's not a lot of research on the effects of stress and lichen sclerosis per se, but stress can make our flare-ups more frequent, more severe, raises our anxiety. We start getting those uh, secondary symptoms that we talked about last week, lichensclerosispodcast.com forward slash symptoms. Check that out if you haven't. We start isolating ourselves. 
especially if we have to self-quarantine, we're really isolating ourselves. What if you have no one to call? We had a support group network. We would, you'd have a sister, be able to call, could understand exactly what we were going through. That anxiety and that isolation can lead to depression. And here we go again, that vicious cycle, those mental health issues popping up again. So according to the research that I was able to find on stress and autoimmune diseases, stress has been linked to cause autoimmune disease and aggravate it in about 50% of the women that they've studied. So they think that there is a very significant link. They just don't know exactly what it is. I've also looked on some of the forums. I still haven't been able to get into a support group, but that's okay. I'm not even trying anymore. But the public forums that I have been able to see have linked stress to outbreaks as well, which leads me to believe that I'm not an anomaly. So today I'm going to give you five tips that you can do on a daily basis that can help relieve the stress. And I'm also going to give you five quick tips that you can do if you're feeling really stressed and you need to do something to kind of relieve that stress in the moment. So five daily things that you can do to relieve stress. Number one, try to get plenty of sleep. I know, laughable. You're in the middle of a flare up and your vulva is just itching and wants to party, but you're supposed to get plenty of good sleep. I know, really, really funny. But I have a couple of tips on try to help you. Number one, use your medicine. When I get itch, really, really itchy, I put on my cream and it tends to die it down a bit. Number two, don't wear underwear. If I just, you know, go commando, the air just kind of just tends to cool my vulva down and it's less itchy or it stops and I can go to sleep. Number three, listen to a meditative podcast. There's a lot of podcasts out there that are for trying to go to sleep or they're meditative or they are produced to get you into that sleep relaxed state. So try a podcast. Number four, this is what I do a lot. And within a few minutes, I am unconscious. And then I wake up and I'm like, oh, I didn't even realize I fell asleep. So I clear my mind. Don't think of anything else. And I imagine myself in a white room sitting cross-legged. I imagine just staring into the corner. So I'm just staring into this white corner. I don't let any other thoughts enter my mind. I just concentrate and relax and concentrate on this white corner. And after a few minutes, I'm asleep. The hardest part is making sure that no other thoughts start getting into your mind. Because my mind tends to race because I have so many thoughts and so many things I want to do and so many things I'm thinking about that it's literally a circus sometimes in my brain. But if I just think about that white corner, I'm good. And number five, read a book. Lay in bed, read a book. After a couple of chapters, you should be sleepy. Best case scenario, you're sleepy. Worst case scenario, you've gotten your brain off of your itchy vulva. So those are five tips for how to get a good sleep, or at least get to sleep. Tip number two that you could do daily to relieve stress is eat a proper diet and drink plenty of water. Have plenty of fruits and vegetables. Try to stay away from sugars, processed meats and grains, and drink plenty of water. General rule is eight glasses of eight ounces of water or 1.9 liters a day. Water is really good because it flushes the toxins out of your vital organs. It carries nutrients to your cells and it keeps your ears and nose and throat tissues moist. 
So that's also going to help us with not getting sick, keeping our immune system good and healthy to try to stay away from these viruses. Number three, exercise. Not only does exercise strengthen your immune system, but it helps improve your mood and your energy and it helps you improve your sleep. So it goes back to number one. So that's a nice little cycle there. And they say you should try to exercise at least 30 minutes, three times a week. I like this YouTube channel called Angie Fitness TV. She has videos for beginners, for uh, people who are moderate, and for people who are really into exercising. She does it all. She has with medicine balls. She does with, for the elderly. She has with chairs sitting exercises. She's really, really good. She's got all different types of lifts. So I'll have a link for her in the show notes. Also, if you're not into exercising, try yoga. Yoga is really, really good for meditating, getting your body to slow down and just ease that stress off. I found this really great video uh, for yoga for stress. It's called uh, Yoga for Anxiety and Stress. I'll have a link for that also in the show notes, like in sclerosispodcast.com forward slash stress. If you have kids and, you know, little kids, and I know when I was trying to exercise and my youngest was like three or four, and she just wanted to climb on me when I'm trying to exercise. She, when I'm doing my yoga, she wants to just come and crawl up underneath me. And while it's all fun, it kind of takes you out of the zone that you need to be in. So what I would do is dance. Dance is a form of exercise. Pump up your favorite tunes, put them on loud. And just dance as hard as you can with your kids for 30 minutes or 15 minutes or 10 minutes or whatever they'll give you. Tire them out. Dance with them. They are going to laugh. You're going to laugh. You're going you're gonna to be in such a much better mood after you finish dancing with your kids. Sing at the top of your voices and just have fun. Just have fun and, and get that stress out. Or exercise when they're napping. If they're, you know, babies or youngers, that was a mandatory thing when my kids were younger. Up until they went to school, they were required to take a nap in the middle of the day. I don't care if it was an hour, hour and a half. Mommy needed that time. That was my alone time. And that was absolutely required. So number four. Put your priorities in place. We all have a hundred million things that we need to do, especially if you're a mom or you're a business owner or you are a caregiver. We are always thinking not only about ourselves, but about others. Again, this environment that we're in today If you're a business owner, you have to think about your employees on top of your revenues and your business. If you're a mom, you got to think about your kids. If they're babies, you don't want them around people because they might get sick. If If they're school age, now they're out of school. They've closed a lot of the schools in the U.S. Now they're home. Now you got to worry about breakfast, lunch keeping them busy for the next at least 14 days. All of this is added stress. So write everything down. Write down every little thing that you have to do. Get it out of your brain because our brains are really good at thinking about stuff, but they're not really good at prioritizing. They're not really good at scheduling. So write everything down down to the smallest thing, vacuuming the floor, folding the clothes, getting dinner ready, everything. Then go through your list. 
Take whatever is priority. Make a new list. That's your priority list. Then make another list, lesser priority, and so on and so on. And then work from your priority list down. And if you don't get to it, ask yourself, is my life going to blow up? Is my house going to blow up? Is somebody going to get hurt if I don't get this done? If the answer is no, leave it for another day. Don't stress about it. It will be there tomorrow. Do what you can and relax. You've got to prioritize yourself. You got to think about it like when you're on the airplane and they say, put on your mask first and then put on your children's mask. Because if you are not right, they're not going to be right. Daily tip number five, laugh. Laugh every day. Find something to laugh about. Look for the joy in every day. Laughing can boost your immune system and reduce stress hormones. Laughing is awesome. I try to smile and laugh as much as I can. People at work, they always looking at me and saying, why are you always smiling? And I say, why not? Who wants to walk around with a frown on their face? I try to look at the positive, try to look for the joyous things. Just look for the positives. If it's sunny outside, stand in the sun and just smile. Take your kids outside and play. Let them play. Let play with them. Show them some of the childhood games that you used to play. My kids love to play red light, green light, mother may I, things that they may not play these days. Watch a funny video or a movie. If you got, if you can't get yourself in the mood, watch something funny. YouTube, there's plenty of funny things on YouTube. Take a half an hour or even 10 minutes if you can spare it and just watch a couple of videos. If you don't want to fall down the YouTube rabbit hole, set a timer. Say, okay, I'm going to carve out this 10, 15 minutes for myself and set a 10, 15 minute timer and just watch videos until the timer goes off. And by that time, you've laughed, you've released those hormones and you're in a much better, less stress place. You don't have time for watching YouTube. Listen to a comedy podcast. I love listening to comedy podcasts while I'm at work. I'm just, you know, doing my job, my headphones in and just laughing out loud. I don't care people looking at me. I'm in a good place. Guess what? My time is going by faster and I'm not miserable like half the people in my job. Have fun. Have fun however you can have fun. Prioritize fun. Laugh. So those are my five daily tips. Five quick tips. If you're in a stressful situation and you just need a quick de-stressor, ready? Number one, hug somebody. Hug a loved one. Grab one of your kids. Grab your husband. Grab a friend. Give them a hug. Hugs release oxytocin, which are associated with higher levels of happiness and lower levels of stress. Grab a hug. Get rid of that stress. Number two, aromatherapy. Burn a candle, incense, get one of those diffusers. Smells can help you feel energized or relaxed and make you more present in the moment. That's why spas do it. Oh, you ever have that good smell? It takes you back to a happy place and you just feel more relaxed. Get rid of that stress. Let that stress melt off you and smell something nice. Number three, do some artwork. Draw, paint. If you're not an artist, color. Get one of those adult coloring books. Research shows that coloring can be meditative, especially when you have one of those geometric pattern coloring books because you're focused and your brain has time to just relax. Number four, express gratitude. Recognize all the good things in your life. 
all the things that you can be thankful for and be thankful for them. Think about all the positive things. Studies show that grateful people enjoy better mental health, lower stress, and better qualities of life. I, I, I believe that. Because I know, even though I have all this stress in my life, I don't let it weigh me down. I think about the positives. I have a good job. My family's taken care of. We're financially stable. For the most part, we're in good health. We could be in a way worse place. We're in a much better place than we were 10 years ago, five years ago. We're moving up. So think of the positives. And number five, if you have a pet, play with a pet. Or if you have children, play with your children. Play. My kids were smaller every night or every other night before they went to bed. We played a board game. You know, get age-appropriate board games and just sit on the floor and play with your kids. Or sit on the floor and play with your pet. 10, 15 minutes, they're going to love it. You're going to, you can't help but just laugh and smile and be in the moment with them. Rub on them, pet on them, hug on them. All of these things are going to make your mood so much better. So those are my five quick tips. If you need a quick jolt of de-stressor in the middle of the day or something. Another thing that can help you de-stress is a support group. If we build this support group that I am envisioning, we have sisters to call and talk to and say, listen, I'm feeling really stressed right now. I just need to vent. And you can be an ear for somebody and tell them all the good things that they have going on, all the things they have looking to look forward to, all of the really great positive things in their life and help them to look at things differently, how amazing would that be? I really, 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 really want to build this support, this group for us. So since my last video, Symptoms of Lichen Sclerosis, which you can find at lichensclerosispodcast.com forward slash symptoms, I have received an email from a beautiful sister wonderful sister named Nita. She's amazing. She sees the vision. She wants to help with the vision of creating the support group for us, for our future sisters. She is an organizational genius. So she's going to help me get all of the little minute things in order. And this is her business. This is what she does. So if you have a small business and you need some organizational help. You need someone to come and help you get everything streamlined. Check out Nita's website. I'll have links in the show notes, but it's nitaapple.com. And that is with two A's, N-I-T-A-A-P-P-L-E.com. And she's also a notary in California. So if you need a notary, she also has notarynita.com. Again, that'll be in the show notes at lichensclerosispodcast.com forward slash stress. So even though stress and lichen sclerosis can have us flaring up worse than normal, we've got five daily tips and five quick tips that we can implement to try to de-stress. Five daily tips. Number one, get plenty of sleep. Number two, eat a proper diet and drink plenty of water. Number three, exercise. Number four, put your priorities in place. Number five, laugh. And if you need a quick de-stressor, five quick tips. Number one, get a hug. Number two, aromatherapy. Number three, do some artwork. Number four, express gratitude. And number five, play. All of these will be listed on the website or you can look right on your podcatcher. I want to give out two more shout outs. 
So recently, I have been in contact with Claire Baumhauer. You might remember Claire from the lichen sclerosis diagnosis episode. If you haven't listened to that, that's at lichensclerosispodcast.com forward slash diagnosis. Quick backstory, Claire was misdiagnosed for 40 years. When she finally was diagnosed, she had vulval cancer and it led to many complications. Uh, but thankfully, she is still in remission. She's, you know, suffering from side effects of the chemotherapy and all of the operations that she had to get. But she is a strong activist for lichen sclerosis and vulval cancer. She has her own website, her and her partner, Emma Norman, which I'm going to be sharing her story in an upcoming episode, but their website is lsbcukawareness.weebly.com. I will have a link to their website in the show notes, like in sclerosispodcast.com forward slash stress. Claire has been amazing and shared the podcast with her audience. I thank you so much, Claire. And I know together we can all build so much awareness and so much community because we're stronger in numbers. I also want to shout out my first review, five stars. Thank you so much, Paragirl67. Thank you so much, Paragirl. She writes, listening to your podcast has brought tears to my eyes. I'm not feeling alone. Hearing you tell your story is exactly what I've been feeling and experiencing. I found a support group on Facebook that's really helped a lot. Now I found your podcast, which is a bonus. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you, sister. Shoot me an email. I want to talk to you. Thank you so much for that because I didn't even ask for that and That brightened up my day. I just wanted to reach out and hug you and just at minimum say thank you. So reach out, shoot me an email, girlfriend. So the website is 90% done. I would love for you to go out and check it out. Tell me what you think. Lichensclerosispodcast.com. You can leave me a voicemail now. I have put on a service called SpeakPipe. And all you have to do is press record and it can record from your phone, from your computer, your tablet, however you want to reach me. I would love to hear your beautiful voice and get in touch with you. So go to lichensclerosispodcast.com forward slash connect and yeah, leave me a voicemail. All right. I can't wait to connect with you. and see what next week brings. Let's get this support group up and running. I hope you have an amazing week. Don't stress. Look for the bright side. Smile, laugh, play, and I'll see you next week. Bye.